Hey folks, welcome back to the channel, your home for all content, Lord of the Rings home. Today we've got a new development diary video uh, that's about the Mines of Moria, giving us a little bit more information, I think, about some of the specifics for the mines. So I kind of wanted to just watch this in a video with you all and add my comments and uh, kind of discuss what's going on. So without further ado, let's get going. I actually really like the music for this game. Greetings, Ring Bearers. Hello, and welcome to another developer diary for the Lord of the Rings Heroes Middle Earth. This is CG Heme. You've read about it in our journey ahead. You've seen the coming soon icon in game and teasers. Today, in this dev diary, we'll be covering raids and what you can expect from our very first one The Mines of Moria in the Lord of the Rings Heroes of Middle Earth. Since then, the Mines of Moria have been overrun with goblins, orcs, and cave trolls. Adventurers will be delving into this iconic and memorable area of the Lord of the Rings. To give us the rundown on raids in general and the Mines of Moria raid, we have design director Jay Ambrosini along with Jake Neary. Don't Let's start with Jay. Me. All yours. Hi, I'm Jay Ambrosini. I'm the design director on Lord of the Rings Heroes of Middle Earth, and I'm very excited to talk to you about our new raid that's upcoming in the near future. So why the Mines of Moria? Well, when we started talking about our first raid, we wanted to make sure it was a very epic experience. And in doing so, we sat down, we looked at the narrative text, we saw the different experiences that were there. And as we were going through and putting them on the whiteboard, we had one that kept coming up as a very, as the most impactful one could think of. Something about a certain creature of a shadow and a flame. And once we had that together, we Bow knew Rock exactly confirmed. what we needed to create. So what makes this location really interesting? Well, the Mines of Moria are an amazing place that we get to explore. We get to see what a Dwarven civilization would look like, and also we get to see how it would be impacted by having orcs come in and overrun the space. Furthermore, there's a few epic set pieces that we're really interested to show off, such as the Chamber of Mazarbul and the Bridge of Casa Doom. Chamber of Mazarbul and the Bridge of Casa Doom. So the Chamber of Mazarbul, I'm pretty sure, is... If you remember in the movies, they kind of go into what, where there's kind of like tombs and they see the the book and they open it up and there's still people riding as like the goblins and orcs are overtaking the Mines of Moria originally, right? And this is where Pippin accidentally throws something down a well and essentially gets everything rolling in that sort of sequence. Um, okay. And then the Bridge of Cause of Doom. Obviously, we're going to get the Balrog. I mean, it wouldn't make sense to do Mines of Moria without the Balrog, and then that's going to be a fight that happens on the bridge. And here's Jake Neary. I'd like to toss it to him to talk more about the raid. Yeah, so what makes our raids unique is, you know, we're essentially bringing a lot of story elements into the raids. Um, we're trying to take you deep into uh, places that you want to go as a fan of Lord of the Rings. What does that mean? You know, the Mines of Moria is on the is on the the minds of all of our players they they're saying this is a, this is something we want to adventure in and then That's we've great. just got these incredible environments um the art is beautiful our team has done a tremendous job with you know the enemies that you're fighting um the animations are charming we've got uh i actually uh, you know now that i've kind of gotten over and used to the art style and and said okay this is the decision they've gone with um it didn't bother me that much in the first place but now that we've kind of had it for a little while, I actually think the animations are pretty good um, when they're not sort of glitching out. And three times speed can be a little iffy, but like all, I love all of the team up attacks. So I'm, I'm curious about the animations they have here. I'm always a little skeptical when developers are like, we want to focus on the story elements, but it's, it's a raid. Like, I, I guess I just don't go into any, like, dungeon or raid thinking I'm going to get, like, a narrative experience more so that maybe it's just me. Uh, I, I guess I'm just more focused on the mechanics. I've never, I guess I've never had, like, 50% narrative experience, 50% uh, dungeon mechanics in a game like this, but maybe maybe that's what they're going for here. That's fine. Incredible, you know, scale, huge monsters, stone troll, okay. um, orcs, trolls. And of course, the Close Balrog, twice. and they're just Balrog um, confirmed. stunning Again. stuff that we haven't really seen in most um, mobile RPGs to date. You know, being able to take players deep into the mines of Moria itself We've is seen very this before. unique. 
But the way we're delivering raids is different. So we're bringing a chapter style release cadence to raids. So we want the raid experience to always be fresh. We want new chapters in the raids to be unlocking for you so that you always have something to look forward to. There's always something that you're strategizing about, that you're theory crafting with your guild, and that you're you know, aiming at new um, content on a regular cadence. And we think that's you know something that... Okay, so just to talk about this point a little bit, um, I personally don't mind that they're going to be releasing a chapter every month or two months or so like what they said, uh, that is actually how I, I initially interpreted their their release when they were initially talking about this. I think some people interpreted it as all four chapters are going to be out within a month, um, but that was not the case. And um, I think you, I guess you could have interpreted what they said two different ways and what they meant was this particular way. I think a lot of people are like, well, they're just being lazy and dragging out the raid content. Um I think there are a few scenarios where this makes uh, a lot of sense. And it's like, well, if they can, yes, drag out the raid content where new chapters are releasing every month, it gives something a little, you know, give people something to bite on, to chew on content wise for a month. And that's good. And if it means that we can sort of reduce artificially the gap between this raid and another gate uh, raid, like the timing in between them then maybe that is a good thing. So, you know, by the time all four chapters of this are released, they've got maybe another raid in the pipe or another game mode in the works or whatever. Um, and so that's uh, that would be good. I think it probably really depends on how complex the mechanics are for this particular raid. And, you know, coming, you know, a lot of these devs are coming from Swigo, right? So... The raids in Swigo are are kind of complex. Um, maybe not the first one. The the Rancor raid was not as complex as some of the other ones, but I guess we'll see how they're doing it. I, I'm kind of confident that they're going to be able to have a sufficiently complex raid sort of mechanic and setup um, for each of these chapters. Maybe chapter one will be a little bit more tank and spank, and then the other chapters will be a little bit more mechanics focused will be players will really enjoy so our raids are going to chapter one so this i'm pretty sure is the entrance to the chamber of mazarbul but it's different than the picture we saw with uh road to rivendell squad and the orcs and you see the the what i assume to be some sort of orc bomber right um but this says okay so i'm curious now if Chapter one is going to be outside the um, the chamber, or if chapter one is inside the chamber, or if it's multi phase in a way. Like um, that would be interesting. If it's each chapter is still like multiple phases, um, that could be really good. But I guess we'll see. To roll out different than other RPGs, like we've like we've talked about, or you've heard other folks talk about, we, we're trying to introduce this this uh, notion of chapters. So chapters will roll out. You know, every uh, still still to be determined on the the cadence, but with some frequency. Month or two. But the idea there is that you get to unlock a chapter, and hopefully master that chapter on your. We saw the screen before. Way towards the post. you know preparing for the next chapter. Don't use. So, what kind of though. rewards you, you, will you, you get, get from scores. raids in Heroes of Middle Earth? So, generally, there'll be three types of rewards. There's going to be high level gear pieces. Okay. Um, critical materials for your collections progression okay. and then character shards and high level gear pieces so i expect purple gear for sure um to get to g9 there aren't currently no ways to farm purple like essences in the game right now uh so that could be a place that we see them um and just light and we know that they're going to have like light and shadow crystals um, so probably the purple versions of that too. But what does he mean by critical materials to progress your roster? Does that mean epic ability materials? The 10 green ones? What is that? I'm not sure what that means. Um, does it mean this is how you're going to get and it's some sort of like the weapon system or the mod system in the game? Uh, that's, that's very vague. Maybe he's just referring to just essentially all the raids. I'm not sure what he means there. And then character shards. I think we all know who's coming. In the mines of Moria, the ultimate, 
Chase will be Gandalf the Grey. We're really excited to bring Gandalf, Gandalf into the game and having him be the ultimate reward from uh, the Minds of Moria raid makes a ton of sense. And we're excited for people to, uh, to see uh, him make it to the game. So what is chapter one of the raid? Well, in our story, the shadowy figure has lured Gandalf away from the fellowship. It is your job with your ring of power and all the heroes you've collected to guide the fellowship safely throughout the other side of the mines so they can continue with their quest. From a gameplay stance, the party is going to be beset by an endless horde of orcs. Your job and the way you're going to win this battle is by defeating as many orcs as possible with bonuses for defeating multiple orcs at the same time. Well. Make sure you're controlling the battlefield though because the longer the orcs stick around, the more they enrage and the more dangerous they become. That's a pretty standard raid mechanic. Basically, you can't just spend all the time in there that you want. The, every time the enemy goes, they become more powerful, sort of as a way to yeah, prevent endless game loops. So a general strategy for beating the chapter? Well, first off, I'd recommend reading through the kits that are all the different orcs as they come, become available. Okay. However, I want to draw your attention to one of the orcs, which is kind of the linchpin to the encounter, the bomber. The bomber has an ability that he can ready an explosive and then throw it across and it'll do massive damage to the group that it hits. However, note that activating this explosive is one action and then tossing it is the second one. And let's note, these bombs are slippery things, need to be handled with care, and they're easy to drop. Okay, so I actually exactly predicted this when the first raid info came out. Basically, there is a bomber unit, and your whole goal for this particular part of the raid uh, for Chapter 1 is going to be able to time getting him down. So he's going to activate his bomb, and then you have one more turn before he goes uh, to basically kill him. And then what happens is the bomb drops on that side, and you have all of the orcs get massive damage on that particular side. So, of course, the details that matter are how fast is the bomber orc? Because if he's very fast, then you're going to want to start whittling him down even before he's activated, right? Uh, two, how much damage does it do? Do you need to get down the other orcs in the party such that the bomb kills them? Or is it just sort of one-hit KO when he drops his bomb? How does that go? Um, so those are some of the important details mechanics-wise. But, um, yeah, it's basically exactly what I had previously predicted in a... In the last video, I think this is a pretty standard sort of raid type mechanic, um, and 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 honestly, a good choice for like a first, like a first introductory raid chapter. I think this is totally fine. Also, that's a sweet hairdo. Some basic advice on how to approach the raid. Well, first off, remember that you have five attempts per. Okay, that's confirmation of five attempts per chapter. Uh, we didn't know before this, so it was either we thought probably three or five, um, but now it's been confirmed there are five attempts, which means you can use five separate teams to do this part of the raid. And that means, you know, even if you're just doing difficulty one and you max it out, you're still getting 30K per attempt from the reward screens that we saw. So that means that you are getting, what, 150K per sort of chapter. Um, that's, that's pretty good. And, uh, I think it'll only go up from there. So I actually think if you can get some pretty good raid teams online, then you're going to get a serious windfall of uh, gold and resources. Per chapter of the raid. However, once you bank one of these attempts, all the units used inside of that are going to be exhausted and can't be used for the remainder of that chapter. Make sure that you're not... That's an important point, something that confused me for a little while. So you're going to be able to use a team in a different chapter uh, once that chapter starts. Um, so you don't have to build up what would be 20 teams for the raid, right? There's not that many teams. Instead, you you can have um, five pretty solid teams or maybe you know six or seven once other chapters are released that are more sort of niche or specific, right? Not just building one strongest team to go after the raid. Instead, build multiple synergistic squads. Those synergies are really going to add up in the end. <laughs> yeah uh i don't okay so maybe that's a hint um but right now really the only synergistic squad i would argue like with true synergy is is the rivendell squad because basically their synergies allow them to punch up against other squads i don't really think many of the other squads in the game have that level of synergy obviously 
you have the Rohan 3, and Isengard's probably the closest to being a second synergistic squad. Maybe Mordor is there too, but... Um, uh, so now I'm kind of wondering if there are going to be some sort of bonuses at higher tiers for using these types of synergies or in later chapters. Uh, maybe I'm just reading way too much into this. What do you think? Yeah, he thinks I'm reading way too much into this. Also, remember that some squads are going to be better at some chapters than others, and other squads will be better at those that the first one didn't work well in. So, make sure you look at the encounters and think, hmm, do I need area of effect damage for this one? Do I need to be able to take down that one single target that's very important? Or perhaps I need to worry about managing boons and banes across the different enemies on the field. Okay, so those first two, we I think that's pretty sort of standard stuff. Uh, and been talked about before. Uh, one other thing that they've mentioned is, you know, having a raid chapter that, like, focuses on survival, so how many turns you can have, or, like, stay alive. And now they've done one where it's about managing boons and banes. So maybe that's... Uh, maybe that's what we're talking about here. So, okay, let me just lay out a possible sort of theory here. Um... Chapter 1, you need to focus more on AoE damage. We saw that there is a bomber, and so you're going to have some single target damage for that, but you also want to be taking out multiple enemies at the same time, so I think that is more going to be like an AoE sort of focus, especially if you consider the bomber to be an AoE. Chapter 2, if it is in the chamber of Mazarul, then maybe there's going to be a cave troll, right? And that's going to require some sort of single target damage, doing some sort of you know, hitting some sort of damage threshold threshold, so you activate a debuff or stagger uh, the cave troll or do something like that, whatever, um, before you get take massive damage. And then you got last two chapters. And we know one of those chapters is going to be on the Bridge of Cause of Doom, presumably the Balrog fight. We know that Gandalf is the one that fights the Balrog, um, and we don't have him as a character yet. So I'm wondering if that's going to be the one... I mean, you got kind of two options. It's either survive as long as you can or managing boons and banes, or maybe that's the same one. So I'm kind of curious about what the third one is. You know, they kind of come down the stairs to the bridge. Maybe that's what it is? Or the scene beforehand, before the Balrog sort of scares away all of the goblins and orcs, and you have to survive as long as you can there. I'm not really sure. I am interested to see how that goes goes so yeah uh that's kind of my general what i think might be is what might happen for the mines i think that's pretty logical but you know let me know if you think it's something else make sure to explore see what works best for you thanks jay we've covered quite a bit today from the mines of moria from its inspiration what you can expect entering the raid as well as tips and tricks straight from okay i think that's it so um you know, the raids are actually coming up pretty soon. We have uh, Gimli's events coming up on Monday, and then basically right after that is when the raids launch, that, that week after it ends. It's that Wednesday, I believe. So I'm, I'm pretty excited to actually get down and start doing some theory crafting and figuring out what works best. I like the way that they've implemented this raid system because it allows you to, you know, test and try things out, which is a fun part for me without punishing you for it, right? So it used to be in a lot of these games, you had to like force close so that it didn't record your raid score. But now you can sort of choose to keep it or not, um, which I'm a big fan of actually. Um, so I'm, I'm curious what you all think. Are you excited for the raids? I definitely am. I think this will be a shot in the arm for this game for sure. Um, and I'm pretty excited to tackle this and start building out my waster, waster, my roster super wide. Um, not super wide, but wide enough to tackle these so that I can... I, I think this will be a good get gold influx into the game as well. So, thanks for watching.